Oh my gosh, do I have an episode for you today. Welcome to episode 13 of Emma's Happy List. I'm Emma and today I'm joined by Cora Darlington. She is an absolute force to be reckoned with. She delivers truth bomb after truth bomb, wisdom note after wisdom note. So um, get a pen and paper out, a little notepad. People pay good money to have an hour of her time. So um, without further ado, let's jump straight in. Hey, Cora. Hello, Emma. How are you? (laughs) I'm really well. Thank you so much for coming on to Emma's Happy List. Super, super excited. You know that I hounded you, right? I'm like, hey, how do I get on this happy list thing? Let's talk about happiness. It's one of my favorite subjects ever. So You've got for me so on. much joy to share. And actually, I want to... So we've um, sort of been inside the same circles, but this is our first ever like one-to-one conversation, which I'm uber excited about. Yeah. Because I've... Although we've not had like a one-to-one, I've been around your energy. I've been around like your vibe. And for everyone who's listening, I just want to describe Cora as like, she's like the ebb and flow of a gentle wave. Like that when I come into your sphere, I I know you're just like this. So you just give like waves and waves of like love and compassion and calm. You're actually the perfect person for me to speak to today because... I've totally had one got a hell story of a behind that. I've got a total story behind that because anybody that knows me from way back will be like, "Pardon, who are you talking about?" <laughs> well, well, why don't you introduce yourself then? So, why don't you tell us a little bit of your story and what you're up to now, and why that is uh, so different to maybe what okay. people in your past would know? Okay, so I mean, the grandiose version of all the titles and the, the things that you have to attach to yourself is I'm a, a burnout breakthrough coach and a radical self nurture specialist. And so what that basically means in layman's terms is I work specifically with burnt out female entrepreneurs. Mostly the women that I work with are up to some really amazing things in the world. It really matters to me um, that the women that I work with are doing impactful work in the world whether it's social change culture change things like that um they put so much into their work that they have zero uh left for themselves and so my vision really is to just uh support these already incredible women to be able to um feel alive and vibrant and well and calm and clear and confident in their everyday lives because they're out there giving so much Mm-hmm. Um, very, very often they're given from a bit of an empty cup such sometimes uh, a completely empty cup <laughs> yeah well that's such a great sort of mission to be on because I'm speak- speaking for myself I've been there I've been burned burnt out Thank and it's you. a really difficult place to recover from and figure out what you have to do next in order to keep on giving to the you know the capacity that you want to give and that you've got to give but again mm-hmm. like you say you need that you have to be overflowing yourself in order to fill other people's cups yeah I think I think that um the you know the radical self-nurture aspect so I've also suffered with burnout as well um um and also watched my mum suffer with the most spectacular burnout at kind of the age of around about 68 wow so we nearly lost her actually at that particular point and that was a lifetime of not looking after herself at all and at around about the same time then I was suffering with burnout which is ironic because you know I'm a I'm a yoga instructor I'm a meditation instructor I'm a CBT therapist and and, uh, a a life coach an executive life coach you know I am tooled up Mm. so I know what to do Um, but even with all of that I still managed to find myself um, just absolutely exhausted yeah Um, and one of the things that I discovered is that and and which is actually the the bedrock of my work is the radical self and self-nurture pieces you are the priority even if you've got children even if you've got a massive business with loads of employees you know even if you've got like demanding partners whatever it looks like you are the priority and unless until you do the work to kind of go okay well what is it that I actually need Mm -hmm to have me feel in the way that I want to feel. Well, there's an exploration in that because there's like, well, well, what is it that I particularly need? Yeah. How do I want to feel? And then once you know all of that, to absolutely give yourself that and then create out there. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
is it is it is is was the was the absolute difference for me because before that I was like self care came from two places it either came once everything else was done mm-hmm. or it came when I was so sick I had no other option other than to look after myself and then I looked after myself to regenerate and then as soon as I regenerated I literally abandoned myself again and that is what I see continuing and continuing and continuing out there but also one of the other big huge things that I see especially with female entrepreneurs is they're coming from proving um they're coming from like this hustle rise and grind culture um so when even though they may come to me and say oh my god I'm really ready for change I'm really ready for things to feel easier because this just feels too hard they've almost got like an attachment to the struggle the busy I'm so busy I've got so much stuff on well you can't wow. you can't have it both ways you've got to be willing to let go of that in order to create something different so there's an awful lot of reasons why women I think are burning out we want to we want to be better than the men that's the <laughs> other thing you know but so so there's you, you can tell how much I love my work right it's it's the most awesome awesome work ever and just to watch a woman that gives so much out there learn to give to herself and then just be so full of like just a generosity then to be able to go out there but her allegiance is to herself first like the most amazing work ever that's incredible I just want to backtrack just a minute for something you said and it's something that I found really really interesting and something that you just sort of made me recognize in myself did you mean so when they sort of go through this cycle and they regenerate themselves and then they sort of get to the point and they're like oh, okay I don't need to do that anymore because I'm better now and then it tips right back into and like, then they so go like again yeah and that's go again that sounds like me that sounds so I get like these habits in place so for example like a meditation habit my gratitude habit and I see things manifesting and I feel better and I have all these good things going and then I'm like oh do you know what I can let that sort of take a back burner for uh, put on the back burner for now because this is going well and then all of a sudden a couple of weeks later I'm like oh what am I doing wrong and then but that's quite clear isn't it it's it's just I think I think as well I think some of the thing things as well we sometimes see meditation journaling those types of things as there's something not wrong with me but that I need to fix Hmm. so we go in there with that mentality I just need to get better I need to feel better because at the moment I don't feel great so I need to make it better and then as soon as you are better or you feel better then you're right oh I'm completely fine now versus those things being fundamental to live in life above survival mode so the majority of us are living life in survival what i mean by that is we are conditional livers so we we wait for all of the conditions of the world the external world to dictate to us how we're going to feel yeah so yeah. if we get a promotion we feel amazing we feel unstoppable we feel unlimited in our being but if we get sacked, then we feel like crap and the world is against us and everything else. But those things that you just talked about, you know, meditation, journaling, any other number of tools like that, they, they are the beginnings. And for sure, the, 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 um, the things that allow you to begin to live a con- an unconditional life, that means that you decide how you're going to relate to any given thing so you set the tone i am going to feel and we'll talk about this now when you go on about the happy list i am going to feel so i'm i decided because i come i've come from a lot of years of such fear i spent all of my life right up until my early 30s in constant fear and constant struggle and constant anxiety somewhere along the line i decided that life was a really scary place And the best I could hope for was some tools to survive it. Now, you know, that would have been kind of some of my upbringing and and whatever. So when I started doing the work on myself, what became really important was that I had a sense of ease. Not easy. I don't want life to be easy because they're different things, but I did want to have a sense of ease always. So when I journal, when I meditate, when I go into my day, I do it with a framework of whatever happens in my day, in my life, who I am in relation to that is ease and who I am in relation to that is love and who I am going to be in relation to that is whatever, right? And so 
those tools that you just talked about allow that it builds like a self-awareness but it is their performance tools yeah like yeah. we've been given this amazing piece of kit and no manual on how to use it like really we just kind of stumble along kind of doing our best but this is like intentional awake conscious living which is empowered versus you just surviving and just put it up with and and all of that stuff so um i think i think when you i think the stop and start the the stop and start of that is we all do that we really all do that because most of the time we're expecting to feel like it I'm waiting for myself to feel like it, to feel like meditating, to feel like journaling. I think one of the biggest things I learned really early on is your mind is not going to get on board with you. It's just not going to. Just not going to do it. Because your mind wants you to stay where you are because it's yeah. comfortable, it's familiar, it doesn't like you out there taking risks, doing things maybe it's not used to. So your mind is never, well, 99.9% .9 is never going to go, yay, meditation yay journaling for any consistent period of time because it knows it's got to shut up it knows it's going to lose its power over you because it does you know via meditation um and so there's like this there's this woman called mal robbins i don't know whether have you heard of mal robbins i don't think so she's got this amazing tedx uh um speech that she did and she's got a whole thing it seems super simple but it's like five four three two one go and she just talks about um how to get over procrastination so that that would be procrastination in anything and everything and that you really have got to accept that your mind is just not going to get on board with anything so you've just kind of got to find a way to just go yeah. and she just does this thing where she goes five four three two one and go because there's something about that countdown there's nowhere to go from one mm. apart from going so you know that that was always that was always the most amazing that was an amazing tool that I found super simple, but like it gets you off your ass and doing the things that are going to be really, really good for you, like moving forward. Yeah, I really liked what you were saying as well about ease, because that really reminded me of um, a quote by Esther Hicks, which is um, the path of my greatest joy is also the path of my least resistance or it might be for the sure. other way around. So the path of my least resistance is the path of my greatest joy. Totally. So so your your ease with things is also entwined intrinsically with ha like your joy so the more easygoing you are obviously the more um the more th things that you will perceive as like joyful if that makes sense because it all is all about perception um but yeah everything you said so far is like totally on point and actually when we, we, we i try to reiterate this with um every sort of episode or m almost every episode the purpose of the happy list is not to sort of do a thing and then, oh, yeah, I'm happy. But the purpose of the happy list is to get you to recognize when you're in a place where you don't want to be. Yeah. Also, figure out the things that do bring you that joy, that do sort of put you on a better path. Um, because when we are on sort of a more, like like you were saying, mindful mindset or more ease, a, 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 what's the word? A feeling of ease that's when we make good decisions that's when we make you know when we make headway and and the stuff that we're trying to do so yeah. the purpose of the happy list it, it gets criticized and sometimes you know it's a point of contention but it's not destination happiness it's journey happiness completely like moment to moment happiness and the, the other thing to say about ease as well so i also listened to a lot of esther hicks like thousands of hours years ago now there was a visual where, and it still helps me now, really recognize where you were sitting in a rowboat and you could either row upstream, you can really tell when you're doing that, right? You can really tell when you're trying to make things happen, struggle, struggle, struggle. And then I remember to just drop the oars and lay in the bottom of the boat and just watch the sky go by and know that everything's going to be okay, right? But that, but that is a practice. But the other thing about ease that I don't think people talk about very much, and happiness actually, joy, all of it, is that a part of that is to allow yourself to feel however it is you are feeling mm. without categorizing this is a happy feeling so th therefore it must be positive so you've got like two categories you know excitement joy ease um i don't know whatever that's that's their good feelings and it's really good to feel like that and then there's anger there's resentment there's jealousy there's you know all of that that's bad thing to feel that's really bad thing to feel but ease comes when you allow, when you allow 
it all. So ease may well be um, admitting to myself and out loud that I've just seen somebody's post on Facebook and I felt really envious. Yeah. That feels like ease to me. That means, oh, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to pretend anything. I am being with myself in that moment. And as soon as I do that, it feels like ease because the self-development journey, especially some of the law of attraction stuff, right, which you'll be familiar with, had us feeling like if we felt anything negative, if we said anything negative, then terrible things were going to happen to us. And then we, we just had to find some way to desperately feel good. At, but that doesn't change the way that you're feeling, that the way that you're feeling inside. So mm-hmm. ease for me is just being with what is. Yeah. Just absolutely being with what is in acceptance of it. And then when you can accept it, you can take action, clear headed action or not. Yeah. But when we are burning ourselves, especially this time, you know, my business is just, I've just been scaling my business. So, you know, COVID happened. My first thing was like, really now all of this stuff, what is this going to mean? Child home from school. Eh, eh, eh. And then I was like, what if I choose it? Yeah which feels like really radical, right? But what if I choose this whole thing in its entirety, like I invited it myself? Yeah. Something magnificent happens because you're like, okay, if I'm, if I say I chose it, that's radical acceptance of it. Then there's space to embrace it and get innovative and get, um, uh, you know, creative around things and start to see um, opportunities you can't see any of that in any given situation when you're in there. I wish this wasn't happening. This shouldn't be happening. I wish this wouldn't happen. None of that is ease. Victim so ease is just well. like this. Yeah. 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 So one of the things I found, so I'm not a master of this, but it's something that I've started to be able to integrate into my thinking process since I started meditation like a couple of years ago, but it's something um, really, I find really useful. And that's when, when I've, when I've sort of been able to observe a thought, for example, when you see something and it, it riles up an emotion in you rather than like the, like sort of getting on board with that emotion, I've been able to observe it and detach myself from it a little bit. But also I've, I've started asking the question, why did that trigger me? Why did that? And like, what's that cute? Like I have a bit of curiosity about it now. So rather than being completely sort of taken away with the emotion, I'm just a bit like, Ooh, why, why? I wonder why that, sort of had that reaction in me and then that changes the the dialogue in my head a little bit and it makes a spiral much less likely to happen um yeah yeah, I was wondering on your thoughts about that like on adopting that technique every day that technique is the most incredible technique and it is actually the first the the really first and most important part of you realizing this thing that I think we know conceptually knowing something conceptually and knowing it is they're two different things but you hear all the time I am not my body and I am not my mind and you're like well I kind of get it sounds really great but like what does that actually what does that actually in the practice of it mean and when you can separate almost I get some objectivity back from it you realize that your mind is this like tool actually your mind is actually the most brilliant brilliant tool ever but something went wrong somewhere and we've adopted that as being who we actually are when our minds were just meant to be a tool to serve us right most of us have got a mega dysfunctional um relationship with our mind but that whole thing then just continues to grow and continues to grow and the triggers thing is brilliant because i can remember actually uh for the first time realizing oh wow, that thing just really hurt me then. And automatically going, that's interesting. So my, 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 my attention wasn't even on the person. I just went straight to what is going on there for me then? Because there's something for me to learn there that wouldn't have hurt me like it hurt me. For instance, somebody might say, um, oh, Cora talks too much. That would hurt me. And then, but when I looked at it, the reason why it hurt me was because I also thought that And that was connected to a little girl in school when she was seven. And the teachers very embarrassingly in front of everybody in the class went, stop fussing, Corey, you're always talking. And the whole of me wanted to just die. (laughs) And from then on, the messaging's been, you're too much, stop talking, stop talking, you're too much, stop talking, stop talking. So that's healing for me to do. So triggers, actually, 
I love them. I'm like, bring them on because that means I get to learn more about myself. But a brilliant, brilliant tool for the to deepen that process that you're talking about is that there's a book called The Untethered Soul. Have you read that? I have. Oh my god! <laughs> um, and he's like got this really fun thing where he says, you know, you give your mind a name and a physical appearance aside from your own. And you observe her like an annoying flatmate that's kind of moved in and you're just like, wow. And you notice how absolutely batshit crazy she is. You're like, wow, one minute, one minute she's like in floods of tears over something and the next minute she's like, oh, I love some chocolate. Like, I mean, the mind is literally, will tell you to do something one minute and then two seconds later will absolutely rip you apart for doing that very thing Mm. it just told you to do. Yeah. And and so you begin to realize that you begin to um, get a whole new relationship with your mind, which means that you're then able to make, like you said, clearer decisions about your communication and the actions that you take, because there's a still space behind that. There's like a wisdom, like an unshakable. Well, it's just a knowing. It's a knowing, isn't it? It's an unshakable knowing. So, yeah, I, I agree with you about, you know, the um observation side of things and it is actually a super fun thing to try and imagine it as like its own avatar but at the end of the day that avatar as well is just trying to keep you safe so you have if you take that into consideration as well um it gives you sort of a bit more sympathy for the way it's acting but also uh, the ability to disregard a lot of what's going on so that's absolutely brilliant I think anything you've got compassion for doesn't have the power over you. So I always look at mine as like a little girl again, that's a little bit scared and you kind of just go, I really love you. Like I can hear you, but I'm not, I mean, take my hand and we're going to go anyway. This thing that you don't want us to do, we're going to go and do it anyway. Um, Because I think, you know, when people think about meditation, they think it is all about quieting your mind completely. Mm-hmm. And of course, we we have such momentum. Our no, our mind's so noisy that we that's really not going to happen. Not unless you like the Dalai Lama and you're you know on the top of a mountain in Tibet or something. I mean, it's not yeah, likely. But but even I, so, like we're st- he's still a human, you know. <laughs> he is. Yeah, he totally is. I absolutely love him as well. He's really funny. Um, but the and I think a lot of people once they hear, I know for sure when I first started to meditate, I didn't want to even though I knew it was going to be good for me because I had already recognized that the contents of my mind was terrible. And I thought, why on earth would I want to go in there in silence and listen to that? Like, why would I, why would I ever want to do that? You alluded to earlier, the fact that maybe people from your past wouldn't attribute the same sort of um, characteristics that I feel from you having known you just for a couple of months, but what was there a turning point for you? Was there something that actually flipped the switch if you like for you yeah so I live most of my life as a, as a massive control freak huge control freak really overreactive so I would go from naught to 100 in like five seconds um I, I can only ever remember feeling a lot of fear about life like I said um there was a lot of stuff that went on in my home um you know nothing you know nothing majorly traumatic but a lot of change a lot of shifting all the time never quite knew where I was and that that meant that I never really felt like I felt safe anywhere life didn't feel then safe to me so I um had a really bad temper um and I was not calm at all like that was not in my bearing and I remember becoming a mum um and thinking I really want her to be inspired by me like I really want her to look up to me I really want to be a role model for her and right now what she's going to witness is an overreactive stressed out controlling whatever it was and I didn't I really desperately didn't want that and also I was exhausted because living like that is absolutely exhausting you know like a letter would come through the door and I would think my my set point was what is that because I would just assume my assumption would always be that it would be something bad. Yeah, bad news. 90% of the time, there's nothing like that. But that was my belief, was that life was out to get me, really. Um, and so I was really, really tired. And I had seen, meditation had been coming up for me for a little while. 
and I'd seen something with a guy called Deepak Chopra and Oprah Winfrey were doing like this 21 day meditation challenge. And I was like, oh my God, I, I literally, I can't carry on like this. It's absolutely ridiculous. And I signed up for it and I made myself do it every single day. Even, I had to drag myself there. But because I was so desperate to change something, like something had to change, I felt so lost. Like I was like, I don't even know what I'm doing in the world. I don't contribute anything to anybody. I don't know what I want. I don't even know who I am. Like, yeah. it's yeah. terrible. Um, and so I, it was the only thing I had. And so I meditated every single day ever since that. That's like, I keep saying five years, but it's not as near, near more like six or seven years ago now. Um, and it changed my, it's, it's transformed my, it's transformed my life to the point where, I look back and I have got, I've got no idea how I am, where I am. I, I, I literally don't. I went into the space and went, okay. Cause I didn't really have dialogue around. It wasn't like God or anything. And all of that felt really awkward, but I was like, you know, to the powers that be, I'm ready for something. I don't know what it is. And by the way, I am shitting myself, but like whatever it is, I'm ready and I'm listening and I will sit with you. And that's exactly what I did. I made a commitment to that. And then from that space, I get, once I got the calm that I was looking for, I was much calmer. And don't get me wrong, with the, with the uh, part of me that was quite overreactive is also the passionate side of me. So that part of me has not gone away. Like, let, let me be clear, really hasn't gone away. Um, but I got the calmness. But then I started to get like a very different quality of, uh, ideas thoughts that I'd never had before and I was like oh my god what is that it would be a word it would be an idea and I was always a journaler I always wrote things down but you know not probably in the most productive way but so I just started writing some things down and I call them like divine breadcrumbs because and I would just follow them like without question oh my god I, I love that divine breadcrumbs divine breadcrumbs Beautiful. so I didn't have any idea of what I wanted which was really good because I had no expectation because expectation is not that great sometimes you know we've decided I'm going to get there from here to here like this and that cuts out all the surprise and wonder and you know all of that so no I had none of that going on so I was like yes I'll pick up that breadcrumb mm -hmm, that feels good because you know now I'm feeling better then I pick up that one and then I pick up that one and then I pick up that one and then when I look back, I had zero intention of coaching anybody, talking to you about things like this. There was no agenda, zero agenda. And my life is just without any struggle and without any plan and without any strategy and just being fully surrendered, also my favorite subject, my life is, is, tra is, trans is transformed, like really. I've gone from somebody that was scared of everything and needed to know everything to being absolutely cool with knowing nothing. Like Spe really. Yeah, that's amazing. And speaking of surrender, sorry to just jump in. Yeah. So something that you may like, um, and also some of the listeners as well, it's one of my most popular um, episodes. So I think it's episode four and I did a 10 minute meditation wow. special Ooh. and it's literally 10 minutes of um, surrender. So I, it's 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 something that I do so it's like my go-to meditation if that makes sense it's like I'm not very good at um sort of just sitting there and and letting quiet happen I prefer like a guided visualization and stuff like that yeah. so um I recorded one that sort of is what I use as like a little guidance um yeah and it's it's I think it's like this either the first or the second most popular episode like of all of my episodes that that will tell you that people really people really do not want to struggle people mm. really want ease but of course surrendering takes courage it's probably the most brave thing that you can do to just take your hand off the oars and just let life do what it's going to do but one of the things that I always like to to, to which is an, an absolute manifested example if you look at nature and the human body actually without our interference it is divine mm. and we are that like we are life but somewhere along the line we were like i have to have a plan otherwise my life is going to go to shit and that doesn't mean that you don't take action but i decided an awfully long time ago that i was not going to take action from a place of fear and urgency and um struggle ever that i would just sit still 
and wait until the inspired action came versus action for the sake of action. And it, I'm a living demonstration of um, just put the oars down and lie in your boat and just chill out because it's not any we're not meant to be as hard as we're all making it for sure. I think that would be such a relief to so many people that are listening because yeah surrendering is hard but if you have that you know if you have that trust that everything is working out with your best intentions that you know and everything is unfolding as it should be Mm -hmm. one of the things that I really had to let go of was like this this concept of time and like I have to do things by a certain amount of time or I have to do things by the age of whatever and that's Mm -hmm. something that I've really had to work on as well because it's so intrinsically sort of indoctrinated into especially women I feel from a very sure. young age, like there seems to be like a ticking time bomb for things, but that doesn't exist and it doesn't exist yeah. at all. And I no, love your doesn't. divine breadcrumbs. That's like absolutely, I'm stealing that one. It's absolutely brilliant. My other point that I wanted to make as well, just really, really quickly was, um, you know, when you were saying that something had to happen, you weren't sure what had to happen, but something had to change and you were terrified and all of this. But I think it was actually Oprah that said, your soul will whisper at you and whisper at you what it wants until, and if you keep on ignoring it, and if you keep on putting it to the side, it will end up screaming at you. So potentially that is something that (laughs) happened in your case. 100% One hundred percent, and I think that I think that because the noise of the world, because the world is so noisy, we, there's so much incoming all the time. That unless we intentionally create some space to be able to potentially hear that, because mm. it is a quieter voice for sure, um, we we miss it. And and normally the screaming halt will be a breakdown. It'll be trauma of some description. It will get your attention in the end. And you can still actually carry on and live a life of struggle. Like really, I've seen a parent when my my dad died like 16 years ago now and just was was struggle from door to door. So you can, I mean, the the frightening thing is you can absolutely um, keep choosing struggle for the rest of your life. Or we're trying to say with your work, with, with, you know, there's many, there's many people out there talking about it is it it really, it really doesn't have to be like that. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing around the surrender aspect, and you were saying, you know, you just need to trust the really good news about that is you don't have to take that leap of trust for very long either. If you, if you're awake and aware, which is why gratitude lists are so important because it, it heads up to the things that are already going right. You haven't got to take a leap of trust for very long at all before you see evidence of life is supporting me. Like, it's not like you've got to do 10 years in the desert and trusting God's going to make it all okay. And I mean, it really isn't that. Like, you've not got to wait hardly any time at all. If you will just relax and allow this stuff to come, it will come. But also you've got to do the work to be able to acknowledge it. Like, you know, I might ask for a lot of abundance and ignore the fact that my husband just bought me flowers because that wasn't the abundance I was thinking. I was thinking like a £10,000 check, right? But here's the evidence of the flowers, which, by the way, is abundance. And the coffee, coffee one of my friends bought me, also abundance. You've got to, gratitude is a muscle. Oh, 100%. Gratitude is the single thing that changed my life personally. Um, I'm going to have to transcribe this episode though, because there are so many truth bombs going on. I feel like there are so many lessons right now um, that, you know, you're, you're just full of wisdom. Um, I did want to ask though, so did, do you have a happy list right now? Are you, or are you going to start one or what are your thoughts? So happy list. I was like, Ooh, happy list. Hmm. What is that? And I've got one thing and one thing only on my happy list. And that is let me just feel ease. That's it. That's all there is. Like, that's all there is on that. Because, you know, I'm on this episode and people would be like, oh my God, like her life just seems, she just seems like joy, 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 joy. But, you know, during those, during the, those, those times, I've had some of the most challenging times of my life, for sure. Um, my mum nearly passed away. There's been some really dark stuff that's happened in that period. But when I go for ease, when I'm like, I just want to feel ease, which for me is acceptance, even when my mum was tubed up in a hospital um, and to all intents and purposes, we were definitely going to lose her. I could tell the work I'd done because I felt all the things that you feel when you're going to lose your mother, you know, like it's traumatic, um, especially in the way that she was poorly. 
but also underneath that was like this underlying kind of um, knowing. It felt like grace. It felt like ease. It felt like flow. It felt like everything's going to be okay. Uh, it, 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 there was no wrongness to it, which, you know, I say it and I'm like, well, there should have been some wrongness to it, but there was no wrongness to it. I just trusted the process. And even though it was super painful, there was still a happiness to me. Yeah. There was still a happiness, a baseline happiness that does not get taken away by the other stuff that's going on on the surface. And that is massive freedom. Like if you can find like a baseline of happiness, because people think, you know, happiness looks like this, but happiness is really difficult to explain. It's like, um, I suppose the way I interpret it is it's sort of a contentedness of where you're at a um confidence in where you're going and a gratitude for what you have already achieved and what you've already learned I feel like that is my sort of like rooted in the present with an eye on the ball with a backpack full of you know things you're grateful for in a way and it's less when you go to the universe and you go um this is my process now I'd I'd like this 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 and this this is exactly how I'd like it now I'm going to give it to you I'm going to chill out and you can deliver it to me in whatever weird, magical, wonderful way it's going to be. Cause I know for sure it's not going to look anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> but my experience is it's always been better. Yeah. As long as you allow it, isn't it? As long as you don't put like those conditional things on there. If you just aim for, right, I want to feel this way. I, Cause I feel like that's what it comes down to. I want to feel like um, level and steady and sort of, you know, uh, uplifted if you like, mm-hmm. rather than, you know a con a sort of a polarized version of yourself like up and down and all well, that's what esther hicks talks about isn't it she's like the only reason you ever want anything is because you want to feel good that's the only reason if you strip everything away all of the rest of it the only reason you want anything is because you want to feel good that that's it yeah so why are you waiting yeah like why are you waiting because it's joy is available like right now happiness is available right now where you sit without anything changing actually because you are you're the ingredient that's gonna be make it happy or not happy yeah 100 percent. so um that is like really insightful and ease does encompass like everything essentially doesn't it for you and for me as well um however it is tradition that i will share one of mine um mine aren't quite as abstract like some of them are, <laughs> some, of them, some of them are a little bit abstract, um, but some of, the, some of them are basically things that I know I can do quite easily um, and accessibly to sort of raise my vibration a little bit. And one of the ones which is quite relevant at the moment, and um, I really hope he doesn't listen because this is so cheesy and he's not allowed to know that I love him, but it's definitely <laughs> spending time with my brother. So if he's listening, you smell, you stink, go away. <laughs> But if he's not listening, <laughs> so we've spent a lot of time recently um, working on my van. So I've got T4 and um, yeah. And my brother is way more sort of like dexter- dexterous, is it, what's the word? Dexterous, De- dexterous, no, yeah. dexterous yeah. with his hands. Yeah. And he's like, he's got qualifications in like electrical engineering and he plays with cars in his spare time. He's like my engineer, mechanic, carpenter, like electrician yeah it's a great person to have around but we've been working a lot on um my van and sort of uh, redoing all stuff in the van at the back and rewiring electrics and stuff but it really takes me back to when we were children I think this is why I love it so much because when we were children we used to have um my dad had like loads and loads of um trains like toy trains but not toy trains they were like you know like model railway sets like yes. not toys don't dad I didn't say toys that's not very what I mean. important it's my dad's listening also <laughs> sorry dad so he used to um so my brother and I we used to set up the tracks and we used to like put the trains on whatever but my brother never let me really play with it but what he would let me do was like sandpaper the track so I was allowed to like sand them down um and hand him like tools and like help him did you set. play with it when he was gone tell the truth um, I don't think I did. I was too afraid. He's my older brother. And he, okay. he did used to throw me around the living room every Saturday morning when WrestleMania was on. So yeah. Um, but I think 
now it's really funny because it's exactly the same as adults so we're like full grown adults and he's I'm like sat there and he's like pen drill scalpel not scalpel but you get me so (laughs) it's the I don't know if it's just like the pure sort of like childishness about it but also doing adult things or if it's just spending time with my brother because I spent so much time sort of away from home so when I am home we do end up spending loads of time together and we do have the same sense of humor and stuff like that as well my parents laugh at us because um they say that we've just got our own language because we'll just say things that obviously we know about contextually like from our upbringing and jokes and stuff and then they're just looking at us like you two have lost the plot (laughs) <laughs> absolutely lost the plot and it, I, I find that. it so heartbreaking though when I hear about people who don't get on with their siblings do you, like I just yeah. find it like it tugs at my heartstrings a little bit because I feel so lucky like don't get me wrong we've had our blowouts but we're also very good at um having a blowout and then it's gone we, we're not like grudge holders we'll we'll disagree yeah. and, and to be honest as older adults we've we don't we rarely have proper disagreements anymore and if we do we're very much more adult about it yeah I mean my my relationship with my brother is one that that is absolutely beautiful now definitely was much more difficult when we were younger but that was kind of down to the situation we were in at home that was Mm -hmm. kind of set up for me to be the parent and never his sister and so it's taken a, a while for us to be brother and sister versus me being in a role, forced role of mum and him being very resentful of that yeah, um, yeah, and me that, being very judgy it. about his behaviour and all of that nonsense and then you know when you come out of that and you just realise you know we I remember him as a little boy tiny little boy just dragging his Christmas presents into my bedroom why he couldn't open his bedroom I don't know <laughs> drag them all into my bedroom way earlier than we're supposed to open everything up so trash my bedroom because he's younger than me he's like five years younger than me yeah trash my bedroom and then go and play with his toys but I remember him just like this gorgeous dear little thing you know that I was like oh my god baby brother um and that gave me just access to this ability to be able to just drop all of that and just see uh you know who he is and from that we've been just being able to build the most gorgeous relationship and you know, I would also not like him to see this, see this, this particular podcast series. You do not allowed. <laughs> no it's like unwritten rules. You're not allowed to be nice to your siblings. Exactly. Like, not allowed to be outwardly loving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been such a pleasure to speak to you and have you here and like have all of these truth bombs and, and wisdom and everything. But where can everybody find you? Where if you're online, I assume. So where can I they am. come and get you? You can find me on Facebook, you know, the lovely Facebook. I'm Cora Darlington Coach on Facebook. I run a community called the Thrive Community. Um, you can find me on Instagram, also Cora Darlington Coach on Instagram as well. Um, all of my contact details and things like that are on, on there. So the Thrive Community that I run is for any woman that is looking for um, tools to be able to thrive. Um, no matter what is going on in their lives, we, this is the most beautiful, buoyant um, collaboration. This is gorgeous. And then, obviously, my my coaching practice is more to do with um, female entrepreneurs. But yeah, if anybody's interested, just hook, just holler, holler. <laughs> Love that. Thank you so 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 much. So I'll post um, all of your details anyway in the episode description. And if people want to get involved with the conversation, they can use the hashtag share your happy list. Um, also, yeah, subscriptions and likes and all of that sort of thing really help out um, with getting the messages out there. So any support all of you lovely listeners can give us would be much appreciated. That is gorgeous. Thank you so much, Emma, for having me on. And just I just really wanted to say, um, I'm not sure whether you not not you know how important your work is. So like just to see like people holding spaces like this for conversations like this is just of the utmost importance. So it turns out us gobby girls yeah, don't yeah. stop talking and doing some stuff right. I know. I just wanted to chat a bit of shit really. And look what it's doing. It's beautiful. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I will speak to you super soon. Indeed. Bye.